it's me, X Canadensis, and for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to fix a doll's hair that is just completely tangled and matted, and you don't even know where to begin because it's so bad. Because trust me, I've been there where I have left behind a doll that I found at the thrift store because I was so scared to do her hair. This doll I picked up on Craigslist a while back. I picked up the lot for a separate reason, but she happened to be there, and she was also a doll I needed for my collection. But I was very intimidated by her hair, so I didn't mess with it. But I do feel confident now. As you can see, it's still in its original style with the curls. It's just that it's become extremely frizzy and tangled if you look. It's so matted that a lot of the hair is just completely frizzed up into the curl. So you can't even like straighten it all out. So this one's going to be a lot of work, but I think this is totally manageable. And we're going to be able to get her to look even better than she did when she first came out. So... What you're gonna need, this is actually extremely simple, it's a lot simpler than you think it is. All you need is boiling water, you need a metal hairbrush. This one is like non-negotiable. Plastic hairbrushes create a lot of friction on that plastic hair and cause it to stretch out and become even more damaged. So you're not gonna want to use plastic tools, except in some cases when the hair is not tangled anymore, you can go through with a fine-toothed comb. This is a plastic fine-toothed comb, but once the hair is entangled, you're not running as much of a risk, and if the hair is damp especially, you should be fine. And then we are also going to be using just my regular shampoo and conditioner, nothing special. It's just cheap shampoo and conditioner. All right, so I'm going to take you guys to the kitchen so we can get started. Before we get started with the restoration, I just want to make it clear that dolls with Kinecolon hair should not be treated this way because Kinecolon hair is totally different and it will react differently to heat and to being brushed. So this is Kinecolon hair. I just need to explain to you what Kinecolon hair is so you don't accidentally mess up your doll. Winx Club dolls by Mattel, a lot of Monster High dolls and a lot of older Barbie dolls will use this type of hair. Lottie Daw is another example. You will know this hair if you've ever had a doll with it. It's extremely light and fluffy and thin. It can tangle pretty easily and it sheds a lot if you brush it, but even when it sheds a lot, it actually won't lose a lot of its volume. It's absolutely beautiful hair. It's actually my favorite doll hair fiber and it's not used anymore to my knowledge. I believe it, it, it is not used on dolls anymore. Um, but hopefully this can help you spot it so you make sure not to heat it up. But as you can see, it just behaves very differently to nylon and saran. The doll whose hair we're restoring today is nylon. If you're doing a Jack Specific Wings doll like I am, just so you know, the Blue Mix and the Sirenix dolls have Kinecolon hair and I'll show you that. Blue Mix dolls do have nylon, and I'm not 100% sure which ones have Kinecolon, but just be careful. I know Flora's hair is Kinecolon, and if it's not Kinecolon, it is something else, but just be careful if you do decide to restore them. And then I believe that Believix Power uses nylon, but not 100% sure, because it feels very... It's a very expensive good hair fiber, but just be careful. And then Sirenix over here, mine don't have their wings on right now, but this is, this is Kinecolon. All right, that's your warning. Do this at your The bulk room. of this project is, of course, the boil wash. So I'm washing her, I'm washing out her hair, and then I'm brushing conditioner through it. Be careful when you're brushing conditioner through the hair before you start boiling. And then you're going to boil the hair, condition it, boil it again, condition it, keep brushing it. Use your metal brush and then move to the fine-toothed comb once you have all the tangles out. Just do not detangle with the fine-toothed comb or any plastic tool. And as you can see, I'm doing repeated boil washes and repeated fine tooth combings and I keep doing it off camera too. This is extremely important. All right, so after leaving Bloom to soak in the boiling water and then soaking her with conditioner brushed through her hair, this is what it's looking like. It's so much better, but it's still dry. If I run my hand through it, it's a little bit um, crunchy, I guess you could say. The, the bottoms are quite crunchy and you can see that damage here. This is an extreme, but I'm gonna be running a hair straightener through her hair. If you're satisfied with it this way, stop here. If you're not comfortable using a hair straightener, stop here. If you are wanting to start using a hair straightener but you're nervous about it, try it on a, either try it on like a strand in the back of your doll's head where it won't matter as much if it gets ruined or use a doll that's already ruined and do it on her hair just to make sure that it works. But every hair type in every doll will react a little bit differently to the hair straightener. So anytime you use a heat tool like that, always start at an extremely low temperature and only use one that has temperature settings. Mine has uh, temperature settings, but I can't really share what they are exactly because they aren't, they aren't like specific temperatures. It's just 
numbers on a dial and they're not related to the temperature. I don't, well, they're related to the temperature, but I don't know exactly what temperature they are, if that makes sense. Um, nylon is a higher temperature hair. You can get it pretty hot, but you're going to want to go on the lower side to be safe. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of the hairs are still crunchy and running the hair straightener through it will make them less crunchy. All right, so I'm going to go straighten the hair. This is a bit awkward, but having the doll between my knees, I feel like is the best position for this. So I hold the head with my hand to make sure I'm not putting unnecessary strain on the neck peg. And then I comb through it, straighten it, comb through it, straighten it. And then when I feel like it's done, I section it off and start on the next one. All right, friends. So now I wanted to show you what I'm doing in more detail now that you've gotten to see the time lapse of me doing a big section. So I've done about half of her hair. This is what it's looking like. It's a bit dry on the bottom, and what you're feeling when you feel dryness on the bottom of the doll hair is one of two things. It's either, the case with mine is that a lot of the hair has been stretched out and has become thinner than it's supposed to be, and that's why it's all wiry looking, if you can see that. And the reason that this happens is because of brushing with the plastic brush. Like I told you guys earlier, if you brush with a plastic brush, um, when it's really tangled. I mean, you can brush it just fine. This is plastic. You can run it through just fine and not cause any damage this way. But if you're brushing with a plastic brush and you're going at it really hard, like kids are going to do. A lot of kids don't realize that this isn't like human hair. Um, it will stretch them out. And when you stretch them out, there's no going back from that. The most you can do is try to restore the part of it up here. That's going to be a little bit thicker. And then you're going to go through and cut. And you don't want to cut the actual hair because you don't want to mess with the hairstyle at all. You're just going to want to cut these longer ones. So the ones that are just wiry and messy. And then you're going to see some up at the top of the head too. Like I have some up here. You can cut them out or you can pluck them out. I prefer to pluck them out with tweezers just so I get the full hair out so there's not a bunch of shorter pieces at the top. Um, this doll surprised me because she actually had a bunch of these little wiry ones in the bangs and I wasn't expecting that. All right, now I wanna show you guys what it's gonna sound and look like up close when you're doing this. So this hair is wet and the reason I do it wet, you don't have to, you can do it dry. It gives a little bit of a different result if you do it dry. The reason I do it wet is because there's something in chemistry called the heat of vaporization. So it takes a certain amount of energy and it's a lot to cause water to turn into gas. And you want that because it takes a lot of the heat energy from getting directly into the plastic on the hair and instead uses that energy on the water. And the actual act of boiling the water on the hair is similar to a boil wash. It's gonna really help get that in there. And it's not just gonna be direct metal heat on your doll's hair. And you don't wanna put super direct heat on it because the hair is made of plastic, so it can melt. All right, so this is the sound you're gonna hear. That sound is totally normal. It's not the hair singe. All right, I wanted to demonstrate that if you run the straightener over dry hair, you don't get a singeing sound at all. And when it burns, generally, you don't hear a singeing sound. I haven't had any big burns yet, but it is possible. And when it happens, you just wanna work around it. Um, that's why you really need to get familiar with what you're doing, put it to a lower temperature if you feel like you need to, and always wait um, up to three minutes after you set a new heat setting, especially if you went too high and you need to go down, wait for it to actually go down. All right, I'm gonna show you what it sounds like on a dry hair. And when it's dry, go fast because it can melt. But you see, I just ran it right over that. It's still hot and nothing. But then when I run it over a wet piece, this one's still damp. Right at the end, you heard it. And I'll run it over another wet piece from the part that we haven't done yet. And you're gonna wanna run it over several times, so you are going to be running it over dry hair. See, so that sound is normal. It's not the hair singeing, it's nothing like that. It's literally just the water boiling. I know it sounds scary and having all the gas come off is a little freaky, but it's just water boiling. And do not do this if you're not comfortable with it. A boil wash is more than enough. It'll make the hair so much nicer. I just wanna go the extra mile here, and that's why I'm straightening the hair. All right, so now you can see the difference. So I did a very heavy boil wash and conditioner treatment on this hair before I've straightened it. And so this is the straightened side and you can recurl this all you want, there's no problem with it. And then this is the side that only had the boil wash. So you can see there's a huge difference here. There's so many more flyaways in these little ones that are 
that were stretched out and are all curly and messed up. This isn't normal curly. This isn't like a doll's curly hair or like a person's curly hair. This is hair that's been overstretched. So that's why it looks like that. But then this hair, I have either helped those curly hairs be tamed and now they fit in with the rest of them or I have trimmed them off at the ends like this. All right, so I'm going to finish the rest of the head now back to time lapse, so I will see you then. Didn't adequately explain these in the clip where I was talking, so I wanna make this clear. Run that straightener over the hair fast. I go a little bit slow because I know the speed that works, but if you leave it in one spot for any period of time, it will, it can and it will melt the hair. You wanna be extremely careful, and if you feel like you're getting too close to melting, then lower your temperature. So again, so we have finished the straightening iron part of this video, and as you can see, it looks a million times better. I still have some definition to the layers, but I want to kind of enhance that. So I'm going to be doing a light curl to her hair. I'm just going to be using foam rollers and I'll show you doing that. And we're actually going to do another boil wash because after you straighten the hair, you remove, you know, moisture from it and it becomes very staticky. So you can really tell up here where the hair isn't being weighed down um, that it's all over the place and staticky. So I'm going to be boil washing it one more time as well as running conditioner through it just to really overkill this but i'm really happy with how this turned out i think it's a million times better so this looks slightly horrifying but basically i used plastic wrap and then aluminum foil on top to put her bangs where they go and then i used aluminum foil as end paper and just wrapped her curls i didn't make it like a whole curl i just wrapped the entire layer one time just so it has a slight flip on the end because that's what it looked like originally. Now I'm going to sit her in the bowl if I can because I want the hair to lay as naturally as possible and then you just boiling water. And then I'm gonna leave her to soak for a little while and then after that I'm gonna stick her in the freezer for about 10 minutes. The reason I set her in the freezer is so that the, the the temperature shock kind of helps set the curl faster. It's not particularly necessary. I just find that I like the result and if it makes me happy, then why not? So I'm gonna leave her to sit for a little bit and then yeah, I'll show you when she's done. Good day, Americans. She's drying. Welcome back, friends. It's been many hours and Bloom's hair is now dry. I am shocked by this result. I did not think it was going to turn out this good. About halfway through the video after I did the boil wash and it didn't look like it had improved much, I was ready to scrap this video and just not. Um, but it turned out amazing. It's not crunchy anymore. I did curl the layers so the top- that's why it looks so voluminous, by the way, is because I curled the layers. It's completely tangle-free and super super nice no frizz i'm so happy about this the one thing i still need to work on and i'm just gonna boil this later is that i want the bangs to sit a little differently the aluminum foil actually worked a, like really really good but i didn't place them as well as i probably should have before i did the aluminum foil so they're not perfect but as you can see we completely tamed all of those flyaways we still have a few stragglers that i can get but Overall, I'm really happy with this. And you guys saw how atrocious she looked before. And I, even I, like, I'm pretty comfortable doing doll restorations, but I felt like it was a lost cause. So I'm very happy with this. If you end up using this for any of your dolls, let me know what you think and if it worked well for you. I hope so. There are other tricks that you can use, but I highly recommend sticking with shampoo, conditioner, and water and whatever you can do with those and heat. Because any kind of chemicals you're going to use on the hair, conditioner is just adding to the hair. It's not taking away from the hair, but you don't want to use fabric softeners or any kind of harsh chemicals like that because they actually strip away at the hair. So they can make it look a lot better. And I really like some dolls that I have that were done with fabric softener, but I just don't know what the long-term effects of that are. So I like to go with things that don't take anything away from the hair. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching for all this time. Bye.